Welcome to this video tutorial. Um, in this video, we're um, starting a little mini series and a starting point to, to help beginners create their own um, game, their own 3D game in Blender. Um, so, the end point of the mini series will be a, um, a little game like this um, where you can use some arrow keys to drive around a little car. Um, so, we'll split it up into three videos. This first one's going to be just to create the, um, the ground plane, so a sort of grassy terrain um, that's got some mountains and valleys in. The second video is going to be so that you can have something that will move around when you press um, the arrow keys. And then the third video is um, going to be so that you, instead of just having a box that moves, um, we're going to make a little car with some headlights like this. So hopefully the end point won't be a finished game, but it's going to be a starting point for you to be able to put your own characters in, whether that's sort of a Mario style character that walks around and jumps, or whether it's like a, a vehicle, like a tank that can move and shoot. Uh, it's completely up to you. Um, so let's get started with the first video. Um, I've got uh, an empty Blender scene just here. If you've not used Blender before, whenever we look around, I'm pushing in the mouse wheel, um, scrolling with the mouse um, uh, with the mouse uh, wheel as, as well. Um, you left click to move the 3D cursor, and you right click to be able to select. Um, okay, so let's start off by deleting this cube. So right click to select it, and press X to get rid of it. Um, and in its place, I'm going to press Shift and A to add a mesh and a plane. A plane's like a piece of paper. It's got no depth, it's just um, flat. Okay, I'm going to scale it upwards, so I'll press S and then move my mouse outwards until it's kind of the same size as the grid and then click again. Um, and we want this to be a sort of grassy terrain that's lumpy. Um, so. First of all, um, let's go into edit mode. We're in object mode at the moment. I'm going to press tab to change into edit mode. Um, and we've got one, two, three, four different vertices. Um, you can see them up here. Um, the more vertices you have, the more detail you can have, um, but the slower your game is going to run. So we want to have a balance of not too many, but enough to get some detail. So um, we're going to press W and subdivide this plane. That's split it up into kind of four pieces of paper. If we change the number of cuts up, we've now got 100, so 10 by 10. Um, so I'm going to go out of edit mode, um, and I want uh, to add these hills and valleys. So let's add a modifier, so it's the little spanner over here. Add a modifier and a displacement modifier. So the displacement will move all of those vertices up or down by a certain amount. Um, but all of the vertices at the moment are moving by the same amount, which isn't what we want. We want the mountains go to go up and the valleys to go down. So, for that to happen, um, we're going to add a texture, so I'll click New. Go on the Textures tab, that's the one that looks like a, a chessboard. Um, and then instead of the texture type being Image or Movie, I'm going to change it to be Clouds. So hopefully now you can see you've got a cloudy texture with some light and dark areas. Um, and depending on how light and dark they are, depends on how much each of the vertices have been moved up and down by. So let's go back into the Modifier tab. If you change that strength of the modifier, you can see you can move how much up and down each vertex goes. So I'm going to go back into Textures. You can play around with different types. I think the distorted noise looks quite good, um, especially if you change kind of the size of it. Um, you can see it sort of making um, various sort of hills and valley shapes. Um, that'll be fine for me, but it looks quite jagged and quite sharp. To make it a bit smoother, we'll change the shading to smooth on the left, but it's still quite sharp. So we're going to add a new modifier, Modifiers tab, Add Modifier, and this one's going to be a Subdivision Surface Modifier. And this kind of puts in extra vertices um, to make it a little bit smoother. Okay, so that'll do for the shape. I'm going to apply both of these modifiers so it'll work um, better in the game a little bit later on. Uh, now we want a texture um, that looks pretty. I'm going to go for a grass texture. Uh, so I've just searched in Google Images for grass and tileable, and then we go in UV editing um, to change the, uh, the mode in Blender. So let's make it so we can see the whole thing and go into edit mode by pressing tab. You can see all of these verdes here. I'm going to open up the image I found from Google Images um, and I just search for grass and tileable. And when you're searching for a texture or when you're creating a texture, um, you want an image um, that is uh, not too big, otherwise it'll slow your game down. Uh, I'm also going to change this to texture mode. 
um, and I want to unwrap each of these vertices. So with my mouse over the right hand side of the screen, I press U and unwrap. And then we can see how each of these vertices now is wrapped onto the image, and then we can see the image on here. So yeah, so I was saying when you're choosing a texture, um, you want the size not to be too big. You, you want it to be square, um, and you want the, the width and the height to be in powers of two. That means um, sort of 512 or 256 or 1024. That just means that it, um, the graphics card can cope with it better, and it works in a more optimized way when you're running your game. Okay. Um, so we've got our ground plane here. Um, I'm going to go back to the default mode. And we can't see that texture on here yet because we're in um, solid mode. If we change it to texture mode, it works. But I want it to work in material mode um, so that it'll work with all the sort of nice lighting effects in um, the Blender game engine. So to make it work here, let's go into the materials tab and add a new material. Um, and I'm going to change the diffuse color. That's what we think of as kind of a normal color of an object. Um, and it's a really good idea to name all of your materials. I'll call this um, grass. Um, you name them so that when um, you're organizing your game or programming your game a little bit later, it's much easier to work out which part of the, the program you're controlling. Or especially if you end up exporting your game into a different game engine like Unity, you have to um, label all of your materials and your objects. Um, so we've got two colors here. We've got a diffuse color and a specular color. The specular color is the kind of the highlight um, that you see when light reflects off your surface. So I'm going to make that a lighter green, like so. Okay. We can still only see the color. We can't see that nice grass texture until we go to the texture tab, add a new texture. This one is going to be um, image or movie. Again, I'm going to change it to be called grass. Um, we've loaded the image already, so if we click on this little icon, we can choose um, for it to be displayed. And now you can see that grass texture here. If you can't, just check that the coordinate mapping is set to U and V. U and V because um, we've already used X and Y and Z. Um, U and V is the, the equivalent of kind of X and Y in two dimensions. Um, UV unwrapping means you're taking a 3D object and you're squishing um, it down so that you can splat it onto a two dimensional image. OK, um, so this will do quite nicely. Um, one final stage just to set up your terrain. I'm going to add a little bit of lighting. So I've got one light up here. I've right clicked on it. Shift and D to duplicate. And I'm going to move it over here um, because the best games have sort of really nice um, uh, dynamic lighting. Uh, so let's change the color of the light on the lighting tab. I'm going to go for something a bit orangey just so you get kind of more atmosphere in your game. So at this point, you can see the lighter green here doesn't look very good. Um, so I'll right click on here, and you can change the material specular color. I'm going to make that a little bit darker. There we go. So we're in Blender Render mode at the moment. If we change it into Blender Game mode and press P, you'll notice that all the nice lighting effects um, disappear. Um, so to make it keep the nice lighting effects, I'm going to press N to bring up this properties panel. Um, and then under shading, we'll change multi texture to GLSL. And then if your graphics card supports it, when you press P to play the game, you'll be able to see the nice lighting effects and you'll be ready to go. Okay, so that's it for this video. The next video will tell you how to make um, a, a little box move around with the arrow keys. And then the third video is um, instead of just a little box that moves, how that can be a car or a tank or any type of character like that. Hope this is useful. If you have any um, suggestions on how to do it better or if you've used this, then please do add a comment to this video. Thanks very much for watching.